four o'clock. Okay, so I'd like to begin the meeting on November 8th at four o'clock. All board members are in attendance as well as Kristen Kennedy and Tim Myers. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law by Governor Baker on June 16, 2021, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count toward quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT. To use Zoom, you will need to use the link on the agenda and download the Zoom application at www.zoom.us and create an account or use one of the call numbers listed on the agenda you will need to the webinar ID to join by phone only. While conducting meetings remotely, we will endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to our standard procedures as possible. However, use of this platform will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. One, while the board members or commissioners and applicants will be on video and audio, public participants will join the webinar as an attendee, meaning they are muted and with no video feed from them. Two, during the public testimony portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raise hand function found under participants from Zoom or make a request for the Q&A function. If you're joining only by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. If an applicant wishes to display materials, please make the request of the chair and the email materials to board staff for sharing on screen. We, when starting testimony, please state your name and address for the record. Three, there is a markup function in Zoom, which will allow you to call out specific areas of presentation materials. Four, as in any public meeting, indecent behavior will not be tolerated. And anyone who abuses use of the meeting platform will be terminated from the meeting. Five, business will be handled at all times indicated on the agenda. Business not concluded in the allotted time will be tabled to the end of the meeting to allow for timely logins and remote attendance. Six, board members are asked to announce themselves when making a motion. And second, so that'll be clear to the audience and minute takers who made motions. All voters all votes will be by roll call. Seven, when all business indicated on the agenda has been completed, the members will vote to adjourn meeting, signaling the end of the meeting and the termination of the ECAT recording. All participants will be disconnected from the webinar at that time. Applica applicants will join the webinar as an attendee and promote it to panelists at their agenda items. Applicants will then be able to share their screen and present their materials as much as possible. Presentation materials should be provided beforehand and loaded in permit I so that the materials can be included in the public record. Okay, so let's start. This is an emergency meeting um, about beaver muskrat related activity to considering the issuance of an emergency permit to immediately alleviate a threat to human health and safety from beaver or muskrat related activity on Picker Lane. You muted. Thank you. <laughs> on Tuesday, the DPW received a complaint um, from some residents that was forwarded over to the land use department. The land use planner, along with the DPW highway foreman, walked out to the area and identified a beaver dam. Um, for anyone who has never seen a beaver dam, I am going to uh, pull up a picture and show you what they saw. Oops. I'm gonna to try to pull up a picture. Okay, here we go. So here you can see, <clears throat> um, remember the DPW, this is the Beaver Dam. If you can focus a little bit back here in this corner where my um, cursor is, that's actually the flowing water or water flow that's being obstructed. Um, I think if I go, yep, here's another um, little bit closer shot. Um, one might say, how do we know this is, these are beavers? If you kind of look at the ends of some of these sticks, you'll see that they are gnawed in a, um, a manner that generally is an indicator of um, a beaver um, chewing on them. Um, the way that the regulations are written, um, there is only a certain reasons where a beaver dam can be um, breached or and or 
the beavers captured humanely and removed from the area. And one of those conditions is um, if the resulting flooding or backing up is posing an issue with septic systems. So now I'm going to ask Tim to show you two videos that he filmed um, yesterday at two properties at the end of Picker Lane. So Tim. I know I'm trying. Hold on. No, it's fine. Take your time. He's... I don't know why I don't see. There um, you go. Okay. And 37. Correct. Perfect. I can't play them because for some reason on my screen, they're going this way, not this way. So now if you, yep, there we go. All right. So Tim, you can describe what's happening. So the water is flowing. Yeah, the, the water is behind me where I'm filming. Um, if you look towards the house on that flower pot is, um, let me play it again. So that's the, the edge of the pond and I'm swinging around. Um, he's got standing water in his yard now. And if you're looking towards the house, that is his cover for his um, cesspool. And you can see all the standing water that's here now. Um, so that's the one house. Let me get out of this one. And 38. And so this is the next house next to it. And um, there's standing water in between the two homes. Um, if you look out in the distance, that is the edge of the pond here. Kind of narrowing as I'm doing it. And uh, then I turn around and that's their cesspool cover right there. Um, this house has been running a um, actually two sump pumps uh, currently uh, since the summer as well. I don't know if you want to see any others, but. Um, actually, why don't you play the first one, Tim, that shows the walking path. Okay. Just so um, people can have an idea. So this, of the, this is the very end of Picker Lane. It's the trailhead going in. Now the flat part in front of you is a trail. It is, that is trail, supposed right. to be walkable. <laughs> Wow. And then to the right, that goes towards those people's homes. Hmm. So and, that area right in front of you should have no water and was actually at one point a maintained hiking trail. So the water is being forced path of least resistance across the land and is coming around and now dumping into those yards. There are other areas that are um, being impacted by this on other streets. Those homes, the septic systems are out in the front. So the, the imminent health hazard is with these two homes. There are other homes that are being impacted by this beaver's dam as well. Um, so if the board was so inclined, um, I would ask that you issue a permit for the emergency um, alteration and um, from that, the um, land use planner is ready to issue a um, her piece for the Conservation Commission um, that will allow the DPW to go in and um, slowly try to release what's being held back by the Beaver Dam. The plan would be to establish a little bit, not have the, um, the flush, but kind of allow, maybe do it over a series of time, over some time, um, hopefully tomorrow will be enough time um, to just kind of pull away from it and get the water flowing um, back to its normal course, not being diverted over and impacting these yards. Um, so I, any questions, any comments? So is it mass fisheries and wildlife who would come and collect the beavers and then release them? Is that how it would work? So we have calls out to them right now um, asking what we can do, um, whether or not we can trap and then would they come. Um, and we so far, uh, apparently they're all still working from home. Uh, Mark Taylor was on that this morning. Uh, I think he left at least five or six messages and we have not gotten a call back. 
Um, the imminent hazard right now is these cesspools being flooded out. So I would like you to make the mo I would recommend you make the motion to do the two things, breach the dam and trap the beaver. Um, obviously, we'll follow up with um, whatever needs to be done to trap and relocate the beaver. But if we dismantle his dam, even if he starts to rebuild it, the imminent hazard will go away. I have no questions. Anyone? Uh, Chris, uh, Chris looks like he's going to say something. Yep, he does. <laughs> Got a smile on his face. Uh, forget it. All right. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. All kidding aside, how are there any conservation repercussions? I mean, I know they kind of wield a pretty big axe when it comes to doing things close to the water. And is this like on their end of things going to be done? I absolutely think something needs to be done. Um, this this seems like more of a is are we involved just because it's you know accessible yes yes that's so there the only reason that this action can be taken in this manner is if there is a and there's a, a clear cut list of conditions that um allow for this action to be taken in this way um and one of them is an imminent health hazard of the sewage disposal systems potentially being flooded and I mean, it can also, you know, not as pressing would be if it were under, well, actually it would be as pressing if it were undermining foundations. There's a bunch of different criteria, um, but one that is glaringly obvious is yeah. if it is going to yeah. impact the septic systems um, of I, these homes. I am happy to make a motion to issue a permit um, to deal with that beaver situation to summarize on pick our lane second thank you <laughs> i'm muting now all those in favor zayas yes leblanc yes mills yes okay thank you is there anything else Kristen? um nope nothing that was um we will have to revote where we weren't posted the full 48 hours in advance of this meeting um it will get posted as part of your next meeting and we will reaffirm this vote um we'll also hope yeah we'll also be able to provide you with an update as to how things went um with the the project um but conservation has been um their land use agent has been right alongside us um as we've been going through this she actually was the one who went out witnessed the dam and then came back to us. She's confident in issuing her emergency, her emergency relief waiver happens from her and then she'll bring it to the conservation and she's quite comfortable. She's already got it typed up and ready to go. So, and our DPW will be the ones trying to relieve the pressure. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I guess I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting then at 4.13, October 28th. Second. All those in favor? Nice, yes. Mills, yes. LeBlanc, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ball. Bye-bye.